under attack! special episode of uh, Two in the Kingdom. This is going to be, uh, uh, I think, a really good one. And uh, we're not going to talk a whole lot of uh, present Chiefs today. We're waiting on uh, a caller that uh, we talked to you about last week. And, uh, Touchdown! Touchdown! Oh, oh, my. We got Chiefs Royalty on the phone. One of the building blocks of this great franchise. The one, the only, Abner Haynes. How are you doing this morning, Abner? Good morning. Good morning. How are the both of you? Oh, excellent. Wonderful. Excellent. Welcome to Two in the Kingdom. Thank you so much for being here. Oh, well, thank you for having me. Well, one thing, and, and you know, this is, I think, really what our our main focus is. And, and for me personally, I mean, I love the, the, the current Chiefs. And uh, yet, they wouldn't be around if it wasn't for guys like you. I mean, you really had a big part in the founding of uh, the entire AFL. The NFL wouldn't exist the way it is today if... if, if uh, people like you hadn't actually chosen not to go to the NFL, but to kind of get into this new startup thing that uh, that Lamar Hunt was doing. And uh, so I want to thank you for that, first of all, actually. That's not even, there's no question there, just uh, just a statement. Thank you for making that choice back in 1960 and then making football what it is today. Well, it's my pleasure. Uh, I, I remember coming through during that time and, and I was looking at the NFL and, and living in Dallas, I heard about Dallas who couldn't get a franchise and, and was thinking about starting his own league. And uh, it just happened that my dad knew his dad and uh, that turned out to uh, be a very positive thing for the city of Dallas and Kansas City. What what really influenced your choice the most? I mean, because I've I've heard that you were you were looking at going into the NFL at the time. Is that correct? Yes, I was uh, drafted by Pittsburgh, and uh, Ed Kiley had uh, pretty much parked up in North Texas because the procedure then was to sign a guy. I think I was a fifth round draft choice, and uh, they were going to sign me. But uh, uh, I noticed the NFL had quotas for black. And I was listening to this new guy talk about he was going to open the doors uh, to black players from black schools. And I, I thought that uh, that was uh, very positive looking and forward looking. And, and, and my family, uh, who were uh, totally involved in all of my decision making at the time, stuff you know I just recently this last week we got to go a couple times and see the brand new arrowhead which is 
you know, a direct tribute to Beautiful. Lamar Hunt. It's unbelievable. I can't wait to you get up here to see it. Um, and we were able to see to have your bust there yeah, and, it's, and uh, some really cool stuff about you as well. So that yeah, was that and was really the neat. teams you played on and everything. But my thing is, um, can you talk about, you know, when you come in the league, you talked about discrimination, your battle on off the field. The NFL basically come into Dallas and tried to rub you guys out because, um, you know, they knew that there was some special product there. Um, can you talk about what Lamar Hunt was as a person, you know, um, how he inspired you or guided you through all those obstacles on and off the field you dealt with? ready 
studied to be a minister. Uh, and so uh, I was studying humans and, and psychology and those kind of things that ministers uh, supposed to study. And during that time, uh, our churches were integrated. Uh, when I was coming up in Denton and I was writing my, my book last night, and I was right about this, uh, blacks, white, uh, were both members of my church in Denton as a little boy. And I had relatives who was as light as anybody and so forth. So I think a lot, all of that combination, I noticed we don't do much integrated on the church now and, and, and so forth. But back then, as bad as it was, people were trying to come together. They had a sense then uh, you know, where this country was and what it was going to take for us to maintain this planet. And they were not asleep. And that, that surprised me that so many people who were of all colors uh, we're thinking like uh, I have been taught. And that's what helped me at Dark Texas to realize my dad said, don't let the people who don't want you there dictate your process. Right, right. It's like there's people don't want you there. He said, there's some folks that don't mind you being there. He said, go find them. Right. And that's what I would do. And, 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 and that's uh, one of the things I'm very proud of now. Is the brotherhood of the men that uh, Mr. Hunt and Coach Stram brought in to the chief organization. These were class guys. That means to me they came from good parents. Right. Because when we were attacked, we would come together. And I didn't really have to do anything. They made sure that, hey, if, if uh, whatever the problem was, we were going to be in it together because we were attacked as a football team and we came together as a family. And and that's just been a great lesson for me, and, and I try to continue that with my children, my grandchildren, wherever I can. Well, I didn't mean it takes so long. Oh, oh hey, no. you're, this is this right. is your show right now, Mr. Haynes. We're just we're just. Thrilled to have you here. Yeah, so please, it's great hearing the history is, is 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 huge. Much better than anything I think X and I are going to be able to put on the table. Oh, absolutely. Um, one, uh, well, and real quick for our viewers, uh, you know, if you're if you are a younger fan, if you're somebody that that hasn't, as myself, you know, I've 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 had to learn a lot and study a lot and really dig into the history and and uh, it's an amazing history for uh, for the Chiefs, for the Texans, for the entire AFL, and I mean. Mr. Haynes, you were a huge part of it. Um, one, one question. It, it was a lot. Uh, Lynn Dawson, uh, Chris Burford, Fred Albanis, uh, Alan Reynolds, and I could go on and uh, I, you know, these are my brothers. Right. And and I'm not just talking, but we've already lived. We live it every day, we, and we literally love each other. And it's because of what we've been through together. And it's like a family. It's, it's what makes a family. You need the suffering. You need the test. Right. It, there's no need to panic because it's not what you want. There's some good in there. And we learn to believe in God and faith and each other. Right. And it's a wonderful experience for us playing ball because it, it takes you down the road with humans. You know, and why are you here? How far are you going with another human? Right. How far are you going with your relationship, with your spouse? Because that's, that's all up to you and them. And, and I'm just proud of my teammates and, and the kind of people they come from.